Hi, it's Mr. James here from Brown or Mr. Academy. This is Year 10, ICT Lesson 5. You're going to need a paper and pen to complete this lesson, so if you want to pause the video now, collect your resources, and then continue. What I'd like you to do is draw a simple diagram which has got method, advantages and disadvantages going across the top and then it, there's enough space underneath to write about eight different sections. Today's learning is going to be to understand the methods used to collect data. The do now task is as follows. Can you name five different methods that can be used to collect data? So there's a bit of a clue underneath for one of the answers. The answers for the do now question, the methods used to collect data could be through questionnaires or surveys sensors, interviews, consumer panels and loyalty schemes. Bit of a recap for you. Data must be processed to become information. Information is in context but data has no context. Information is data which can be coded, structured and has context. So data alone um, needs to have a bit more information with it in order for it to be understood. The methods used to collect data and store information. There are many different methods that can be used to collect data and information. The method that is chosen can depend on what data and information is to be collected, where the, the data and information is to be collected from, how the data and information will be stored and processed. Data collection methods. We've got questionnaires and this can be either done online or it can be done as a paper version which is classed as a hard copy. People fill in questionnaires themselves and there might be a mixture of open and closed questions. Emails. Online method of communicating with other people. Sometimes the email might have a questionnaire attached to it. There are sensors. This is when people collect data automatically and send it to a computer be collected on a regular interval so it might be a, date, a sensor that's connected to maybe the entrance to a bus and counts the amount of people going on and off. There are interviews this could be done one-to-one -one. the interviewer writes the response however the problem is it can be quite time-consuming. Consumer panel panels this is a sample of customers who buy a particular type of product and then their behavior um, represents them part of the public so it might be a consumer panel for a new flavour of crisps and you can see the response to them tasting the crisps. Loyalty schemes. Many shops now have these loyalty cards. What they do with the information is that they collect um, information about how often you shop in, how much you spend and that's connected with your name, address, email and telephone number so that they can contact you. There are also statistical reports. These are reports that are produced by the government. So for example with the COVID-19 there's data that's produced every day about deaths and how many people have been tested, etc. There's also secondary research. The internet browser performs a search for you, so you can type in anything and that's the research done for you. Right, let's go back to your table that you've drawn, or indeed you can just write a list. What I'd like you to do now is fill out the advantages and disadvantages of each data collection method. So we've written down all the methods down the left hand side and then we're going to write about each one on the right. All we're going to do is identify one advantage and one disadvantage for each. So if you just want to pause the, the video here you can just write down the methods down the left hand side now. So firstly we've got questionnaires. They are quick and simple to gather information from. However, the disadvantage are that people might not be willing to fill them in or take time to fill them in. Emails, the questionnaires can be easily attached to the email, but again, there might be limited response. The emails might get lost as well. Sensors, 
they can gather data where humans cannot. They can be quite useful in hospitals, they can be used in dangerous areas to collect data. However, if the um, technology breaks down, then they become um, not very dependable upon. Interviews, you can gather detailed information, that's the advantage. The disadvantage is, is that they take a long time to, pe to interview people. Consumer panels. This is a very inexpensive way of collecting data. However, the disadvantage is, is that they, it might not be a full representation of the whole of the public. Loyalty schemes. The advantages of using loyalty schemes is that companies will often give you um, vouchers for your um, next shopping trip. Um, however, the disadvantage of loyalty schemes is that it often rewards people for spending possibly more money than they actually need to spend. So there's always an advertisement of if you spend over £100, then you'll get £20 back. But it's encouraging you possibly to spend more than you actually wanted to. Statistical reports. They're easy, quick to find data, and so it saves time in the long run. But the disadvantages are is they're often quite difficult to read. Um, initially, they're very expensive to create the document as well. Secondary search methods. Um, search engines such as Google can find millions of links instantly. However, the disadvantages are that it often takes a lot of time to wade through all of the information. Let's have a quick look at an exam question. A retro games company would like a questionnaire designed to give out to customers. It will have the company logo at the top and consist of questions to find out age groups of customers, how often customers would play the games and their favorite games, which Microsoft software would be the best to use and why. We want to pause the video clip here and answer the question and then I'll go through the answer. So the best software to produce this would be on a um, word processing document, for example, Microsoft Word. And the reason being is, is it's a document that will be using mainly text. Word is the best for this, as you can edit, and edit the text size and change the font type. You can use the header or footer to put the logo of the company in, and you can also easily insert a table. So Microsoft Word would be the best. Let's have a look at questionnaire design. This is an example of a questionnaire that was created by a year 11 student last year. Can you identify three negatives of the design? So have a quick look to see which uh, Microsoft package it was produced on and maybe other items that you don't like. So the three things that I've identified is that there's no color used, so it doesn't really stand out. Um, there's no company logo used and it's not very eye-catching. Now in terms of um, all of those things that have been identified that doesn't necessarily make it a bad question there but it has been produced on Excel as well which isn't necessarily the best one to produce a questionnaire on. Um, it does allow you to use the text boxes quite easily or the cells but using Word would be a lot more efficient um, and also it would look a lot more presentable. Now, if we were producing a questionnaire for this task, which you're going to be in a minute, and um, this is the kind of thing that you'd need to produce, you'd need to um, get a wireframe or a prototype, prototype produced. The first um, table that you can see is empty, so it's got question, what field name, and then what data type it would be on the right hand side. Now, the reason why you produce this uh, wireframe is so that you can see how it's going to be presented and maybe how you would store the data in Access. Um, at a later date. So if we now look down below you can see first question is do you play video games? To shorten that I've just put the word play and then the data type would be a yes or no answer. The next question would be which console do you own? So the word console is then used and then there'd be a drop down list of all the possible consoles that the person might have. So it's a good way of just um, working out how it's going to go forward because really we want the data to be put into a database which will be accessed at a later stage so we need to work out how it's going to um, play out from um, in the planning stage 
When you're designing a questionnaire, you need to consider the following points. Are all your questions appropriate? How many different data types did you use? Have you used many more of one data type than others? If you have used a lot of one data type, is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Review all your questions and then see if there are any unnecessary questions that you've asked. An example of this is have you just used a lot of yes, no answers? Now this can be an advantage because you get a lot of data which is relevant. You either know if somebody likes it or dislikes it, but you might have not allowed the person filling out the questionnaire to give a full and varied answer. Right, let's look at the ICT project. On the school website, there's an ICT project that you've been having a go at over the last couple of weeks. We've been breaking it down, so you need to go to student home learning page on the school website and go to newsletter and nine and also the ICT project is also there on a separate link. This is a scenario that we've been looking at. Progress Retro Games is a new business which will be offering retro computer games to the public. They will supply these games both online and at an internet cafe. PRG have asked you to help promote their product and try and boost sales. This month they have chosen three games that are particularly popular when they were first released and hope they will be featuring these. They will attract more customers. They would also like you to collect data from their customers to influence future promotions. The three games they want you to promote are Tetris, Pac-Man and Space Invaders. We've um, attempted the four tasks above, so you should have had a go at designing a logo, a interface for a website, a business card and a leaflet. Um, and now we're on the questionnaire. If you haven't had a go at the other four tasks, then feel free to have a go at those either now or during the summer. Here's the success criteria. So you must include the logo that you've designed previously and you need to include suitable questions to find out the age group of customers, how often customers will play the game and their favourite games. Here are some things to think about when you're doing your questionnaire design. It must include your logo design. It must include the company's contact details. It must include the following three questions. How old are you? How often do you play on a game console? And what is your favourite game? And the questionnaire needs to have five questions all together. So you could just add two more questions yourself, or ideally you could go up to um, 10 questions all together. I want you to design it on Microsoft Word. However, if you haven't got access to Microsoft, then you could just do it on a piece of paper and take a picture of it. Um, and then please can you email your questionnaires to ict at brownhills.walsall.seh.uk. Um, now, if that, web, if that um, email doesn't work, then just keep hold of it and then you can show me when we get back in September. Here's an example of a questionnaire design on the right hand side. So we've got the logo at the top, we've got questionnaire written across the middle, and then we've got the questions and how it will be laid out. And then I've also added um, the company's information at the bottom. Um, I hope, good luck with the questionnaire design and um, I look forward to seeing them.